when you have followed my YouTube channel during the past weeks, uh, you know that I was busy with a very simple oscilloscope. Uh, had to work between, say, 10 Hz and 50 kHz or so. And uh, I damaged my Farnell sine wave generator, so I had to make a new one. And the schematic of the sine wave generator that I made, at least the link to the schematic, is published in the text box, the description of this video. But anyway, this is kind of other um, project that I made in the past. A universal tester for MOSFETs can be N MOSFETs, can also be P MOSFETs. And I found that I even could say test uh, some transistors with that. Anyway, this is the schematic and I will give the link in the description. In fact, it's very easy to make oscillator on a ferrite rod. 100 windings here, 100 windings here. The signal is coupled back via a capacitor. And when the MOSFET, be it a P MOSFET or an N MOSFET, is healthy, the whole thing starts to oscillate and you can, say, take out the signal via the oscilloscope. So, for this MOSFET tester you need an oscilloscope. Uh, well, that's completely logical. So, uh, let me show how that circuit was made in practice. I want to go to the workbench. At first I want to show the developments of the oscilloscope. They are surely not dramatic, but at the moment I have this waveform. Reason is, as far as I could see, I have here a sawtooth saw signal. That sawtooth signal is given out by this sawtooth generator. The link to that sawtooth generator is also on YouTube. The waveform is not perfectly linear. That gives some problems, but not too big problems. But anyway, so this, this is the situation at the moment. We have here a kind of sawtooth that moves the dot along the screen in a certain way. We have here that sine wave generator that also, say, uh, drives plates and in that case the vertical plates. And um, most important thing, of course, is that this MOSFET here drives now the horizontal plates. And it is a IRFP440. It's an N MOSFET, the drain source voltage, maximum 500 volts. It's now on approximately 300 volts. I have got quite a few big shocks from the 300 volt during the past days, etc. etc. Here are the pin connections. This is out of the data sheet and at the moment the, uh, the signal to that MOSFET, to the gate, is driven via a 0.47 microfarad 500 volt capacitor. And here we have 300 volts, here we have minus, and the uh, drain goes to the horizontal plate. Uh, I realize that that is not very exact, not very sure when you want to reproduce this circuit, but I want to publish the complete circuit in the future, but um, at the moment I only want to focus on that MOSFET test oscillator, and that is here. So, um, this is that MOSFET test oscillator. Like I told, the only idea is that uh, when a MOSFET under test, and that's here now, this is the MOSFET under test, is connected to the tester. Link in the text box. 
the circuit will start to oscillate. And that is, say, the only idea here, when such a MOSFET is healthy, uh, you can of course go to the datasheet, test all kinds of properties and of course when you uh, are working more or less in the professional field. Uh, that's surely useful when you want to work with MOSFETs, etc, etc. But uh, this tester works on a very simple principle that the, when the MOSFET is healthy, the whole circuit starts to oscillate. And the oscillation is here. Here you see that oscillation. It's on a certain frequency. I don't have a frequency counter connected to this MOSFET tester. But it works. So when you see this, you can be absolutely sure that your MOSFET is Okay, and I've done many, many tests with all kinds of MOSFETs and even with bipolar transistors. Some bipolar transistors also uh, wanted to oscillate. And that's the reason why you see here not only, say, the standard indications for MOSFET, gate, uh, drain, source, but also base, collector and emitter. Not all bipolar transistors want to oscillate in this circuit. But say the MOSFETs, it was specially made for MOSFETs, the MOSFETs want to oscillate. And as far as I could see, almost all of them wanted to oscillate when they were healthy. So this is, in my opinion, again a good way to test a MOSFET. Here you can switch between N-type and P-type. Uh, N type uh, the positive with N type MOSFETs the positive goes to the drain and with P type uh, MOSFETs the negative goes to the drain. So of course when I switch it now from N to P the oscillation must stop. Let's try. So here the oscillation stops. That shows that the circuit is healthy. When I switch on the N MOSFET again in the proper way, it starts to oscillate. And that's good. Uh, you can also try to test not power MOSFETs, but normal small signal FETs. And in that case, do your own tests. I found that also small signal FETs work properly. Uh, and of course, uh, perhaps in some cases, specific cases where where uh, small signal uh, FETs, field effect transistors, have sp specific properties, could be that it that it does not want to oscillate. But the whole circuit is so universal that that chance is very very limited. Anyway, thanks for watching. This was more or less all to tell. Schematic is in the other video and the link is also in the text box. Let's again look to the say beautiful first results of that oscilloscope, though I'm absolutely not convinced at the moment about that oscilloscope and the reason is that we see here a, a kind of a square wave while at the moment the horizontal plates are driven via a Sotos generator and the vertical plates are driven out of the sine wave generator so that means that we must see a sine wave on the screen but we don't see that and the reason is I think that the MOSFET acts as a kind of switch. So changing the sine wave into a square wave by its, say, natural MOSFET properties. That's here. Here is that MOSFET. And this does the job. This transistor, in a certain way, does the job. Thanks for watching. Hope to develop everything better and more in the future.
anyway. Thanks.